Good afternoon. One of the markers of genuine religious leadership is the ability to put on the mantle of prophetic witness, the mantle of pastoral presence, and the mantle of the power of the Spirit, even as you are aware of yourself as one among many, with the same foibles and idiosyncrasies as everyone else. Power and humility, boldness and a sense of humor with oneself, speaking and acting for that which is just and right, yet showing grace when we don't quite get there. These are the things that make for genuine leaders of faith. One of my first experiences with Bishop Jean Robinson was when we were both part of a retreat for religious leaders in his beloved New Hampshire. Every morning, he got up before the rest of us to find that perfect spot in the river to fly fish. And every morning, he would come back with a deep smile on his face and no fish. <laughs> when I asked him if he had caught anything, he would laugh and comment on the beauty of the trees, the freshness of the water, the sense of being a small part of God's creation. And then he would say to me, I'm not a very good fisherman, but I'm working on it. In 2003, Reverend Gene Robinson wore a bulletproof vest under his robe as he processed into the worship service that would consecrate him Bishop of New Hampshire. He did so because he and his partner Mark had received death threats and promises of violence leading up to the service. Earlier, in an attempt to sway the House of Bishops from supporting his election to bishop, false accusations of abuse had surfaced. In all of this, Jean refused to let fear and bigotry derail him. In many ways, he was able to embody what the Bible reports Jesus telling others in similar situations. Not only that, count yourselves blessed every time people put you down or throw you out or speak lies about you to discredit me. What it means is that the truth is too close for comfort, and they are uncomfortable. You can be glad when it happens, give a cheer even, for though they don't like it, I do, and all heaven applauds. And know that you are in good company. My prophets and witnesses have always gotten into this kind of trouble. Bishop Jean Robinson is a genuine religious leader. He stands in a long line of prophets and witnesses. His is a voice for justice, right relationship, and for the radical power of love. He has worked tirelessly on behalf of racial, economic, gender, and sexual justice and he has done so with grace and dignity. As we mark the 20th anniversary of Creating Change and all of our transgender, gay, bisexual, and lesbian movement, all that we have accomplished, I give thanks that we are honored to have Bishop Jean Robinson as one of our leaders. My friends, please welcome Right Reverend Bishop Jean Robinson. Little light of mine, I'm gonna let it shine. Come on, this little light of mine, hit it. I'm gonna let it shine, let it shine, let it shine, let it shine. Gene Robinson. Thank you.
<laughs> Fly fishing, how butch is that? I've come here to uh, speak to you about a bunch of H words today. Uh, the first one of which is honor. I am so honored to be here. It is um, such a great privilege to be in your midst and to see the amazing work that, that you're doing. And I want you to just look around and remember yet once again what you've been experiencing in this conference about what an honor it is to be here with each other. Look at your diversity. I mean, you're beautiful uh, sitting out there. Um, you are L and G and B and T and letters that we haven't even thought up yet. <laughs> we are all on our way to embracing the kind of love that God has for us, and uh, you are amazing. I so appreciate the task force and all that it does. It's, it's just an astounding thing that this little beehive of activity could be going on here uh, in Detroit with so many of you who are out there doing the work right in the trenches and benefiting all of us, uh, doing things that some of us don't even know you're doing. Uh, how proud and honored we all ought to be that a gathering like this could, could attract the likes of Julian Bond, one of my heroes whom I heard speak in, um, in college. At that time, uh, the governor of Georgia was an awful, awful man named uh, uh, Lester Maddox, I think was his name. Remember him? Yeah. <laughs> you just dated yourselves, okay? <laughs> And uh, I'll, I'll never forget Julian Bond standing up and saying, I'm sorry I was late this evening, but there was a fire at the governor's mansion. And the library burned. People sort of looked askance, and he said, both books burned. <laughs> and then he said, and one of them wasn't even colored in yet. So Julian Bond has, has been there uh, for a long time. Uh, what an honor it is to be a part of a, an organization and a group that could attract the likes of Matt Foreman uh, to be at its helm for, so, for such a wonderful time. And another H word, history. Uh, I, the thing that I've been thinking about here um, is how this simply could not have been imagined when I was growing up. A gathering of 2,000 LGBT activists, uh, just out loud and out proud, and, and um, well, it was just not dreamt of in my growing up. It's hard to imagine the world before, before Will and Grace and Ellen DeGeneres and Martina and Greg Luganis and all of those people that we could be here. But going back even further, um, you know, the press is all the time trying to get me to, to say bad things about uh, certain parts of our community. And, um, you know, I, I stand on the shoulders of those drag queens at the Stonewall Bar who got... <laughs> who got fed up with the way they were being treated. And I, I owe a lot to them. Or Harvey Milk, who gave his life for us. 